Hello and welcome to United Project Demo. My name is Sandra and I'm here to show you our new project in action. So sit tight and relax while seeing these four people introducing themselves to you and telling what our new project is about. United is a project about introducing and engaging autistic people with non-autistic people and to create better environment, an ex accepting environment in this society. So let's get started. The girls should be here any minute now. Sorry. Sandra. I need to ask a few more protocol questions before we get started, okay? Right. So, let's start with an easy one. What is your name? I'm Emma. It's Hayley. Iris. I'm Viola. How old are you? I'm 28. 17. 24. 26. Do you work at all? Yes, I'm a secretary. No, just school. Nothing. I'm a teaching assistant at the primary school. What is the status of your diagnosis? I'm currently on the waiting list for getting a diagnosis. I should find out something concrete in about four to five years. I just got diagnosed recently. Just last year. I've had a lot of diagnosis since I was 16, but for autism, just a year and a half ago. I was diagnosed with autism at the age of four. Who are you? I don't know. That's the problem. That's kind of a loaded question, isn't it? <laughs> How am I supposed to know who I am at the age of 17? How is anyone meant to answer that? I'm different. Not like everyone else, but I've had all the love and support I've needed that's never mattered that much, and I'm very lucky. How do you feel about all of this? Really confused and scared. And this has never been thought of as a possibility before, and now that it is, I can't help but wonder what this might mean for me or for my future. Fine, I guess. Everyone said that it would be easier for me now that I know what's wrong with me, but I'm not sure that it is. I I'm just feel really lonely. Angry. I feel angry. Like I said, it's just been diagnosis after diagnosis, so who even knows if they've got it right this time? I'm grateful. I feel like my experience is one in a million, and that's not fair. It can really mess someone up if they don't understand what's going on in their head. Why did you come to us today? Really, I'm just looking for some answers. I'm still trying to figure out what this, what this could mean. My school's given up on me, so um, this was my last option. No one knows that I'm autistic. I was going to tell my sister later today, but we'll see. Plus, the psychiatrist that diagnosed me said that this might help, so I finally got ready to come. I came here because I want to help people. I want to show people that they can get the support they need and they shouldn't be ashamed of who they are. We're all humans after all. Okay, let's try something else. What do you think about therapy? <laughs> Where do I begin? Does it actually do any good? It's shit. I mean, it's alright. I, I hate, hate therapy. therapy. They just don't get it. 
They never do. Stop, Stop patronizing me. I'm not a little kid. It's what I want to say. But you just sit there and smile and nod your head so you can get out of the room quicker. Yes, doctor. No, doctor. No, no meltdowns, meltdowns this month. month. You, you must, must be, be doing, doing better. better. They just don't understand how quickly it can all go to shit. They just want to pat you on the back and send you on your way. Then there's the programs. <laughs> Music therapy. Where's some hippie looking weirdo tells you to plonk about in a piano for half an hour. I don't even know how to play piano. What good is this meant to do me? How are you doing today? World's worst question. Fine, I might be doing great today, but that could all change tomorrow. I don't know when I'm gonna have a meltdown, but I need that person there as much as I hate to admit it. But <laughs> they just want to get you out of the room as quickly as they possibly can and label you cured. Steps. A great program for people with anxiety. In theory, it should work for me because I definitely have anxiety, but my circumstance is a whole lot more complicated than that. But sure, put me in a room with a bunch of strangers and we'll all share our feelings. It works wonders. I'm sorry, my needs as a person don't fit your prescriptions. I'm sorry, my needs as a person don't fit your buy the book questions and buy the book solutions. I'm sorry I'm more complicated than that. You, you might, might want, want to update, update that, that book. book. I know it's not the same for everyone, but having the right kind of therapy. Sure, I've had some bad sessions, but Joy, my current therapist, is amazing. She's never rude or condescending. She's always up to date with her research and treatment, and she's just nice to chat to. I think I'm comfortable as I am because of her. She's always been in my corner. And I wish everyone had a joy. I'm sure so many people would struggle with a joy of their own. So, Emma, how many people treated you from now? Well, you see, that's, that's tricky because I didn't think I was getting cheated any differently because, well, nothing was suspected. I wasn't autistic. I was just weird. I was never quite what my mum wanted me to be. She wanted a girly girl and I definitely wasn't that. Um, I really loved playing outside and I always came in from playing dirty. I was obsessed with creepy crawlies. Uh, my dad left. I don't really remember why. I think because he felt like he couldn't build a relationship with me. And I think my mom always blames me for that. I really struggle with eye contact. And I remember when I was a kid, she would grab my face and make me look at her. I didn't have that many friends growing up. I, the people would tolerate me, but I tended to fidget and distract people. So they would, let's just say it didn't improve things. But my grandma was nice. She care if I always came in from playing dirty or or sometimes I couldn't look at her she would she was just happy as long as I was happy I lived with her for a while but she died when I was 60 I think that was my first meltdown since I was a kid um, it hurt anyway, and after that, I moved back in with my mom. I'm so sorry about that. What about nowadays? Are you treated any differently at work? Uh, it's much the same as it was at school. Uh, I still fidget and distract people, so I'm kept separately from everyone else. I really hate the, the lights and the noise constant people talking at you, never to you, like they have to explain everything. And my boss will sometimes come and to make sure I'm still doing my work, 
but he'll stand right behind me and he'll breathe down my neck and I can feel his breath on my neck. And it's the little things like that, you know. And they pile up. Uh, like how files on my desk pile up because I'm not working fast enough. My brain isn't working fast enough to process all of this. So they keep piling up and they keep piling up and they keep piling up until I feel myself getting overwhelmed and I'm begging for that clock to read 5 p.m. But they still keep piling up and they still keep piling up and piling up and piling up and piling up and piling up until I just, I just can't take it anymore. So, uh, the work is stressful space for you. And when the game, days like that gets you overwhelmed, I really like fairy lights. I always have. I, my room's decorated wall to wall with them and they, they just relax me. I just stare at them and I also have my grandma's old record player and some of her old records. Uh, Buddy Holly, Elvis, and I like to put those on. like your jumper. Oh, Deadpool. Do you like superheroes? Yeah. Which one's your favorite? Marvel or DC? Mm, Marvel. I, I like Marvel the most. It's not because I don't like DC, but Marvel are just funnier. Who's your favorite superhero? Ooh, um, Wolverine is my favorite. I just, I, I think that he is so powerful because he's so alone, but he acts like he doesn't care about the world and he ends up saving it every time, and he loves his friends. I used to read my brother's comic books and he was always my favorite. I really like Wolverine too, and I also read the comics. They were always good, good to read when I wanted to unwind. Yeah, they are, and he's just the greatest superhero out of them all. I just. I always found him so inspirational, and Hugh Jackman is just great. <laughs> I couldn't agree more, and don't get me even started on Logan, it might be even my favorite film. I love Logan, and I was so sad to hear that it was the end of the franchise, but it was just such a jaw-dropping film that I don't really care. Even though I was so emotionally traumatized from that movie, I don't think I've ever had that happen to me from a movie before. Except for Endgame. I don't even want to talk about that one. I don't think I spoke to anyone for like half an hour after I left the cinema. <laughs> it was just so good. Sorry, I've been talking a lot. There's no need to be sorry. That's what you get to do. It's just, um, I don't like a lot of the stuff that people like talking about. Is they don't like talking about this stuff with me. 
find it hard to talk other things sometimes. Sometimes I feel that I can't connect with people. They always have this other motive. But this is a safe space. That's why we created it, so that there is always a place where you always see each other. You know, um, when I was first diagnosed, I felt that I had no one to talk to. I felt I had no role models who acted like I did, as I was considered highly functioning. I just felt that I had to take care of myself, and I struggled for a while. I had to process what had happened to me. I just want you to know that you are not alone here. But I am alone. I'm 17 and I can't make any of my own choices. Most kids my age will be going to university this year, but not me. My mother wants to monitor me for a little while longer. And the girls I went to school with before I got diagnosed, they won't even talk to me, let alone be friends with the weird girl. You know, they used to be the reason that I went to school. They used to make that insanely boring school day go just that little bit faster. <laughs> and now, the school just locked me into a cell of a room with bright lights and kids that I don't know just because I need a little bit of extra help. And they've got this support system where this woman comes along with me to all of my classes, as, less, as if I needed another reason to stand out. I just wanted to go back to the way that it was before. But no, nobody wants to talk to me about Deadpool or Infinity War and Logan or anything like that. Why won't you look at me? Why won't you talk to me? I just need someone to talk to. Please, just anybody. Please? Please? I've had they listened for the first one but as time went on and more things changed they sort of just stopped listening they don't even know I'm autistic it's like they're waiting to be told that the newest thing isn't what's wrong with me my sister tries I suppose she doesn't really get it like at all <laughs> ever most people just assume that I'll deal with it on my own. Speak of the devil. Do you mind? No, no, go ahead. Hey, um, so we need to meet a little bit earlier because some of my friends want to meet up. Is that okay? Uh, um, not, not really. I told you I had a meeting today. Oh, come on. You're always such a flake. Okay, okay, I'll be there. Okay, good. See you in like 20 minutes. Bye! Bye. Will this be much longer? Go ahead, I don't know. Just a few more questions. Um, tell me about your diagnosis. How did you react? Which one? There's been a lot. All of them. Okay, so first it was depression at 16. Um, with that one, I was, you know, suicidal, binge eating all the time. Um, I started self harming. Um, then it was bipolar, but that one they just filled in with a bunch of drugs so they didn't feel anything. Then at 20 it was BPD, which I'm pretty sure they only gave me because I'm a girl and putting someone in a box is a lot easier than actually doing work to help them. Then just in the last year and a half it's been, oh you're autistic, oh you pop. But honestly who even knows if I am? I mean. None of the antidepressants work. None of the cognitive behavioral therapy either. It just all makes me so angry. I see that. How do you deal with all this? 
honestly. Drinking slows down my head, makes me think a little less. Going on the meds ever did. Listen, I'm really sorry, I've got to head. But cheers for all that. Hey, Lily, where have you been? I had a meeting, I told you. You're always so late. Okay, I'm sorry. Right, can we just go in and get a drink? Yeah, I need to talk to you about some stuff anyway. Okay, fine, but you're paying. <laughs> what can I get for you today? Oh, uh, sex on the beach for me, but don't be skipping out on that vodka because I'll know. <laughs> and for yourself. Uh, just jam coke, please. So, how have you been? Oh, wow, yeah, fine. Oh, actually, there was this guy on the bus this morning. Oh, my God. And he was, like, sitting next to me like this, like, on top of me. And I just freaked out right there. And I was like, oh, my God, get off. And everybody was looking at me like I was crazy. But really, honestly, I don't understand how they let people out of the house like that. Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, How are you? Yeah, I actually wanted to talk to you about something. Um, I was at a meeting today. And I was told oh, did Mom tell you about that thing with Auntie Christy and her new boyfriend? No. Oh, <laughs> well, you're gonna have to get Mom to tell you because it's wild. Okay, so basically, Auntie Christy is seeing this new guy, and Mom really doesn't like him. And I was just like, you know, you can, you're free. She's a grown woman. She can do whatever she wants. But Mom said Auntie Christy doesn't have a responsible bone in her body. But it's really much better coming from her. So you're just gonna ask her. So I. Uh, you were saying something. Yeah, um, I had a meeting today and I was talking to this lady because uh, it's to get me some help because I'm autistic, so that she was saying- Wait, autism. <laughs> I thought you had that BGP thing. And isn't autism for like boys? BPD? I uh, no, no it's not. They thought I was, but I'm not. Yeah, but they say that every time. Two more, please. Doubles. So, um, how do you even know that you have autism? Well, I don't, do I? Okay, no need to get angry. I am just trying to help. You're not even listening to me anyway. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Just, just don't tell mom yet. Okay, I won't, but I do need to go, though. Wait, what? You only just got here. Oh, no. You just got here. I've been waiting for ages, and the world doesn't revolve around you, sis. Bye bye. See you later. Bye then. I see you in a very good mood, Violet. Yeah, I guess I'm alright. It's it's been a great day so far. Questions that I need to ask for you, if that's okay. But what are the misconceptions people often make about spectrum disorders? Oh, there are hundreds that I can say, but there are a few that really bother you. For example, that people of autism are just like Dustin Hoffman's character in Rayman, or that it only affects children. I was a child with autism, I grew up to be an adult with autism. There's also that we're all basically the same, that it's caused by bad parenting, that we're antisocial, and some people even think you have some mental superpower. But the one that bothers me the most is the misconception that it's a boy's condition. Girls tend to present their autism somewhat differently to boys and this may result in girls being underdiagnosed. My life would be so different if I wasn't diagnosed at four. And I know so many people have been diagnosed at a later age and are angry that it took so long. And that's unfair. You have made very good points there. totally agree with you there. People don't really know enough about autism nowadays and uh, when they get the chance to really talk to someone and listen to their experiences, it really helps. 
You mentioned that you were diagnosed at four. Would you like to describe the diagnosis process? Yes. Um, because of joy, it was the best thing that's ever happened to me. reason my parents took me to Joy. She helped me communicate through drawings, which is something I really enjoy. I especially love drawing dogs. Her soft, white wings always made me want to fly myself. Another exercise she would do with me was to ask me questions and show me pictures which would represent the answer, and I would pick. Okay, Violet, so how are we feeling today? That's how she got me to talk. I always found it easier to communicate through visuals. She only has always been there for me, and I am forever grateful for her. Joy and her parents have and still support me. Without them, I wouldn't have finished high school and graduated from university, which got me the job I adored as a assistant. But there are so many children, teenagers, and adults who are being ignored and denied the help they need. There has to be more cases like mine. It has to change. That is a very good and positive experience that you have had. And um, I have a little favor. your name. 